This is the 30 second version. Midjourney is a machine learning AI system specifically designed to turn words into images, and it does a pretty good job, but they are small. Meanwhile, Topaz Gigapixel is a machine learning AI system specifically designed to scale images up, and it's pretty good at it. And we can take those two differently specialized AIs and make them fight. No, no, we can make them work together to make print size images. I'm a big fan of print. I really believe that if you're a digital artist or designer or a photographer, that one of the best things you can do is print your work and stick it on the wall and then just let it sit with you. You get a different connection to the work when you see it physically under different conditions throughout the day. And if you're in the process of developing some artwork, you start to spot things that, you, that kind of bug you in ways that you don't necessarily see when they're on the screen. I think it must be the same as like when you print out documents and you spot typos in the printouts that you can't spot on the screen as well. I wanted to see if I could print the results of a mid-journey AI system, which is like the DALI one as well, that other people might be more familiar with. The idea of asking an AI for images of something and then having those up as prints around, around in my studio kind of tickled my fancy. Uh, I have another video about mid-journey linked up there somewhere, but a quick recap is it's a system that's been trained on a lot of images for concepts like a tree and work by lots of different artists. A tree can give us something like this and a tree by Jeff Koons is something like this. It doesn't understand what a tree actually is, but it knows what images that have been tagged or titled with a tree, what they look like. And how it does that is roughly like this. Let's run another tree, and we can see as it iterates over the images until it gets to the end results. Roughly what it's doing is making lots of very tiny images, just like a few pixels across, filled to just random colors, until it's got a few hundreds, if not thousands of them. And then it scores each of those tiny images for which one looks most like all the images of, of a tree it has, and it picks the winner. So if it's produced an image full of lots of red pixels, that will get rejected. But if there's one that's kind of slightly dark around the edge, lighter in the middle, and then with a, a little blob in the center, that's the most tree-like at that tiny small scale. It then doubles it and then fills in all the missing pixels with some more, more random crap, basically, and then asks the same question. Which of these slightly bigger ones looks most like a tree? Does the same with uh, Jeff Koons, uh, a tree by Jeff Koons. Which of these tiny images most looks like a tree? and also looks most like an image by Jeff Koons. And then it scales it up and scales it up, scales it up, always scoring towards the result until you end up with something that looks both like a tree and an artwork by Jeff Koons. So let's do it again with something more complex, like an ancient landscape filled with a field of flowers and snow-topped mountains with fractal pink fluffy clouds and spaceships. So it has to score against landscape, field of flowers, snow-topped mountains, fractals, pink fluffy clouds, and spaceships. Um, so it will take one of these small tiny pixel groups and it will score highly against that and then scale it up and scale it up. What I'm getting at with all of these things is it's quite computationally expensive to keep generating these hundreds if not thousands of images filling the random pixels and then scoring them. So they, they keep things smaller. When you type in at the prompt, you get quite small results because it wants us to be the deciding factor for which one is good before it commits to then making the bigger version of it. When you pick one, it'll then go through the same process of that, but it's focusing all its computational energy on just that one for the next couple of sizes. Computers aren't really fast or cheap enough to do that at scale yet. You can use all that processing power to serve lots of people small images or a couple of artists doing bigger images. But even with that, every time you double the width and the height of something, it quadruples the pixels and it still has to generate multiple versions of it. So it gets sort of like exponentially more expensive every time you jump up a scale. So that leaves us with small images that look good on the screen or on the phone, but not really for print. My image is about um, 2048 pixels by 1024. 
um, when we're printing, we're looking about 300 pixels per inch. The minimum you can get away with is about 150. So with a 2,000-ish pixel uh, image to work with, we can print around seven inches, which is about that. Now that's not really war size. I prefer it to be about 20 inches by 10 inches maybe even 30 inches, but that's starting to push the limit of practicality. The print I have here, which is on archival paper with archival ink, which means it's good for about 200 years and not fading. Um, the really great thing about printing in archival quality is the blacks are really good, the details are amazing, the colours are really sharp, but that also means that if there are pixels in it, you're definitely going to see the pixels. So, solution one, is just send the image to the printer and let the printer software scale it up. It's not great. Two is use a package like Photoshop or another general purpose image package to scale it up. Or three, use specialized image scaling software, which is what Topaz Gigapixel AI is. Just as Midjourney is an AI designed to generate images from words and nothing else, Gigapixel is an AI designed to scale images up and nothing else. It's been trained on hundreds of thousands of photos, the type of things photographers take photos of, so like landscapes and mountains and portraits and buildings and architecture, the typical photographic subjects, but less so abstract art concepts. So when it scales things up, it doesn't have to generate like a hundred or a thousand variations and score them all on the big computer to fill in the pixels. Um, instead, what it's doing is it's going, how do I make these mountainy pixels look more mountainy? It has one job to do, and it doesn't have to be on a big, powerful cloud computer system. It can actually run that on my laptop. So let's give it a whirl with our pinky, spaceshipy, mountainy landscape. Um, I've loaded it into the app, and we can have a look at the preview or move around or have a look at different bits of it. So you can see we've got fields here that have what look like flowers in the foreground. And um, it's quite good because just these few pixels on the left, it's decided to turn into this. Because it's been trained on landscapes, it's kind of going, oh, this is a landscape flitting there. With clouds up here, again, it's looking at these and it's probably going, well, these are quite cloudy, I'll make clouds. The spaceships up here, not quite so much. Mid journey's going, oh, this is kind of a spaceship. Um, over here, we've turned it into something, but it's definitely better than the one on the left. We'll scoot around a little bit over here, back to the landscape again. So let's let it do its thing. And it's filled in this grass and flowers. It's quite amazing considering that this over here on the left is what it, it had to work with. Let's have a look at a little bit more. Back onto typical landscape. It's quite good. And then up here as well, this one last thing. It managed to turn this set of pixels into this over here. So this is the one from Mid Journey loaded up into Photoshop. So 2048 pixels across. And now I'm going to scale it up. Image, image scale, and we're going to use 600%. And we're going to use the automatic uh, way of doing it. There's a number of different choices. Let's just let Photoshop do its thing. So that's what it looks like scaled up. Now I'm going to paste the Topaz one straight over the top. So this is the Topaz version. You can already see it's so much better. If I go down to something like Fields over here, turn Topaz off, you can see over here all this field detail that Photoshop's typed done, this little circle down here, turn Topaz back on. It knows what fields look like. It doesn't really know what this like sticky up area is, but it's giving it a go. If I just move across over to this side, we can see again just a little bit of the mountain here. Just quick toggle on off. Normal scaling, topaz scaling. Just go up to this bit here. Whoa. Steering Photoshop is difficult. Off, on. Let's just zoom in one more time. So this is 200% now. That's Photoshop. That's Topaz. So even though it hasn't turned it magically into a spaceship, it's certainly made it high enough quality that I can print that out and be quite happy that it's going to be okay. Which is what I did with this image right here. If I grab my camera, you'll be able to see the difference between the Topaz scaled one and then the just the blown up and I've brightened the colours up a little bit on this one. So 
hopefully you can see the difference between the two of them. Topaz Gigapixel AI goes up to 600%, which takes our original image to 12,000 pixels wide, just over. And at 300 dpi, that's about 40 inches or a meter in sensible measurements. Now, I'm, I'm not sponsored by Topaz Labs. I pay for the software with my own money, or I guess rather me as an artist, because being an artist is kind of my job, and that uh, involves this sort of thing. So, um, business expense. Anyway, it boils down to this. At the moment, pick your AI that's best suited to the purpose and then chain them together. I can see a situation where, say, I wanted the digital frame on the wall, where the processing can get the image up to a certain size before then a second specialized scaling AI takes over to take it the last couple of steps to make it bigger and then bigger again. And that's it. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have images from one of these machine learning generative art systems and are trying to figure out how you can generate bigger files to print them, I think that this is a good way of doing it. If there's a trial version, you could probably use that. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, um, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff because it really does help. We ticked over a thousand subscribers the other day, which is huge for me, um, and you're all awesome. I'll not see you next week because I have a thing on, I'm taking a holiday, but I'll be back the week after that. See you next time.